Hi, it's Mrs. G. Today, we're going to learn about macromolecules. We're going to go live to PC, who's there with the macromolecules right now. Welcome tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm PC. I am your host tonight. And we, I'm here to introduce you to macromolecules. Yay! Let's give them a big round of applause, please. Living organisms are made up of four types of macromolecules. Carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. These are also referred to as biomolecules because you can find these molecules in living organisms because the living organisms produce them and they are needed for life. Now, what is a macromolecule and how are they made? Macromolecules are giant molecules. You can think of creating these giant molecules is like putting together a puzzle. You need the basic units. You need the pieces. The pieces for a macromolecule are called monomers. It should be easy to remember this word if you can remember mono means one. So think of a single puzzle piece. It is a monomer, a single piece. Now, we know that when we create a puzzle, you need lots of pieces. The same thing goes for creating a macromolecule. You need lots of monomers to create your macromolecule. Once all the monomers are connected, the completed puzzle is the macromolecule. Now, if a macromolecule is made of many monomers, it is also called a polymer. Poly means many. So you can see why they call most macromolecules a polymer. It is made up of many monomers. When a polymer is made, we say polymerization has occurred. Now, let's create macromolecules. But before we start, you need to know that the monomers, the puzzle pieces needed to build macromolecules, are named differently in each macromolecule. For example, the first macromolecule we are going to build is a carbohydrate. The monomer in a carbohydrate is called a monosaccharide. Monosaccharide. Wow. Uh, <laughs> That's a uh, big word there. Yeah, no kidding. So if you combine a bunch of monosaccharides, you create a carbohydrate. <clears throat> I am a carbohydrate. A few side notes to mention here. A monosaccharide is a simple sugar. Ah, you know, I'm just a simple sugar. I'm on a monosaccharide. A simple sugar tastes sweet. An example of a simple sugar would be glucose, fructose, or galactose. You find simple sugars in most candy, cakes, milk, or fruit. Wow. Well, in that case, I love simple sugars. <laughs> now, if you combine two monosaccharides, two simple sugars, we call that a disaccharide. Ah, huh? you know the two of us make a disaccharide. Right. Di means two, and this makes sense because you have two monosaccharides. Here are some examples of disaccharides. You will see the two monosaccharides that they contain. Now, when you combine many monosaccharides together, you create a polymer called polysaccharide. Remember, poly means many, and we have many monosaccharides combined. Many monosaccharides combined create a complex sugar. So when you have many simple sugar units combined, they create a complex sugar. Complex sugars don't usually taste sweet, even though they have simple sugars in them. Examples of complex sugars or polysaccharides would be starch. Well, hello. I am starch. I'm just a simple gal made up of simple sugars. I am quite complex. Which you can find in bread, pasta, potatoes, glycogen, which you can find in beef muscle, cellulose, which you find in plants like lettuce or corn. Now, the function of carbohydrates is to provide you energy. It is your main source of energy. Simple sugars found in candy provide you short bursts of energy Whoa. because they are quickly digested. Complex sugars, like those found in pasta, which has 
the complex sugar starch take longer to break down. So it takes longer to digest, so they provide longer lasting energy. So that is why many marathon runners eat a lot of pasta before a big race. They need longer lasting energy. I'm running in a marathon tomorrow, so I guess I will have to eat a big bowl of pasta before the race. PC, that's a smart idea. The second macromolecule we are going to build is a lipid. Lipids are biological molecules that are generally not soluble in water. When I think of lipids, I think of fat. But other examples of lipids are oils, waxes, steroid hormones, and triglycerides. The body uses lipids for many things like long-term energy storage. When I think of this, I think of a bear fattening up in preparation for the winter months when they will become less active and sleep more. To prepare for this, bears eat more and increase their body fat. They gain a lot of lipids so they have more long-term energy storage built up. So that will help them get through those cold winter months. The body also uses the lipids for insulation. Fat helps to keep the body warm. Lipids are also a major component in cell membranes. That is right. The very thing that surrounds and protects your cells are lipids. Okay, let's build a lipid. Many lipids are formed when you combine a glycerol molecule with compounds called fatty acids. Today we are making a triglyceride. So we will combine one glycerol and three fatty acids. Now, are these the monomers? Most people don't believe lipids to have true monomers. Thus, they are not a polymer since polymers are made up of monomers. Ask your teacher what they want you to know with regards to this. Corn oil and lard have a lot of lipids in them. The third macromolecule we are going to build is a protein. Proteins have a wide range of functions in the body. If you play sports, you might have heard your coach say, eat foods with a lot of protein in it. That is because proteins help with building tissue and muscle. Your hair and nails are mostly made of proteins. A few other functions of proteins is that they help control the rate of chemical reactions, fight diseases, and transport materials in and out of cells. Go proteins! So, let's build a protein. The monomer of proteins are called amino acids. We yeah, a bunch a of amino acids. Amino acids. We make up the we protein, make up the protein eh? eh? When two amino acids combine, they are being held together by a peptide bond. As more amino acids combine, eventually you create a protein. Hey, how you doing? I'm a protein over here, made up of a bunch of amino acids. Often, people will refer to a protein as a polypeptide because the amino acids are held together by many chains of peptide bonds. The last macromolecule we have to cover is nucleic acid. Nucleic acids store and transmit your genetic information. An example of them would be your DNA and RNA. The monomer of nucleic acid is a nucleotide. I'm a nucleotide. <laughs> if you put together a bunch of nucleotides, you create a nucleic acid. Hey, oh, I'm a nucleic acid. You can find nucleic acid in every living organism. PC, you have nucleic acid in your nucleus right here. What? That's cool. The last thing I wanted to mention is what type of elements make up each macromolecule. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen is in each macromolecule. To remember this, think Cho. Cho. But proteins also have the element nitrogen. So add a N to Cho for them. So think John, John for proteins. 
Nucleic acids also have nitrogen, but they contain phosphorus as well. So for nucleic acids, think jump, jump. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Check you guys later. I'm gonna go get some carbs because I need some energy for soccer later. Have your students create these macromolecules or more. Stop by Mrs. G's classroom com to check out my products. Follow me on Facebook or Twitter to know when I put out new videos or freebies. Thanks again for watching.